Hi, so today I am out in the flower patch and I'm starting to plant out these hardy annuals that I sowed from seed in the autumn. I've overwintered them and I have got them through this very cold spring that we have been having. So here is a lot of the hardy annuals that I sowed from seed in the autumn and I have managed to get them through the winter and through the very cold spring we've had. And now they're really ready to get planted out in the garden. I've been umming and eyeing about this for the last week or so, hardening them off but still taking them in at night time because it has just been so bitterly cold at night. It's been lovely during the day but then the temperatures have really, really dropped. But I've decided now that I'm going to just get them outside because they're going to start getting pot bound and a bit silky in their pots and they're ready for growing on outdoors. So what kind of hardy annuals did I sow from seed in the autumn time and over winter? Here you can see Gypsophila Convent Garden, which is a really lovely filler flower for bouquets. I've got some snapdragons here. This is Dorcas. And I've got an Aminagis over here. That's the only large one that I've managed to get through the winter. I've got another tree as well, but they're slightly smaller at the moment, so I'll bring them on a little bit more. More Gypsophila. Different type of Gypsophila. More snapdragons. And I've got some larkspur here. Cornflowers is another one that I grow over the winter time. It's still going to be a little bit chilly, maybe zero, one degrees for the next week overnight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant these out because they're really ready to go now. They are really starting to need the extra growing room in the flower beds rather than just being in their pots. But I'm going to cover them with a low caterpillar tunnel and some fleece at night times just to take the chill off for another week or so. And then I'll be able to take that off and they'll really get growing. Hardy annuals can cope with a little bit of cold weather, but we've just really been having such prolonged frost that I don't want to take the risk this year with them. So what I've got here is I have got some Dorcas plants that I have been overwintering, and these are really good now. They've got lots of nice healthy roots coming through with the pots, and they are ready to go in the beds. And my hardy annuals, I like to space them about 9 to 10 inches apart, which is about 25 centimetres. And a good way to plant them in the garden is just by getting yourself a ruler. I've got an old ruler here, or you can cut a bit of garden cane or barbecue skewer to 9, 10 inches. And then that saves you having to measure and think about how far apart to put them each time. You can just lay this in between and check that you've got the right distance, which is really helpful. So I've started off already with this bed of docus, so I'm just going to get another hole dug here. And if we check my distancing, that here takes us to the middle of where I'm going to put that plant. So that's great. We'll just dig that hole there. Now this bed has not been specially prepared in any way. I've just added some new compost this year to improve the nutrition a little bit. And I've taken out any really large weeds, but I haven't dug it over. I like to go with no dig method of preparation of beds now where I am just adding to the compost layers every year and letting the animals in the garden do the work of improving the soil structure. So let's have a look at this Dorcas. It's had a good water so it should be ready to come out of its pot and you can see it's got lots of nice roots on it there. It is ready to go out into the garden. So pop that into our planting hole. Go, and then we'll measure out another one, which is going to be another nine inches down. Get another plant here. And that one again has got lots of nice healthy roots on it, and it's nice and moist for going into our flower bed here. You might have noticed as well that I have got some drip irrigation line which goes down my beds. This is leaky hosing and it will allow just a small amount of water to trickle out of the hose when I turn it on and this helps me to water my beds when I've got such a large area. Today I've been joined in the flower patch by a friendly robin. It's one of the reasons that I love growing flowers with wildlife in the garden and this little chap keeps coming down to join me as I get the beds ready for planting into.
So I've created my low caterpillar tunnels here with some plastic tubing and some horticultural fleece and I just wait to stain over the tunnels with whatever stones or builders blocks I have got um, lying around or if you watch my previous video another thing you can do is you can fill up your plastic milk bottles with water once you have finished with them and use them as weights to keep the fleece down. Hardy annuals like our snapdragons and larkspur and our cornflowers shouldn't really need this covering. They are quite hardy and they can cope with a little bit of cold weather. But because it has just been such a chilly few weeks, I don't want to risk losing them if I sow in them in the autumn, got them through the winter, got them through that hard spring we've gone. The last thing I want to do is to lose them in the next few weeks. So I'm just going to keep this on, on overnight for the next few nights, take it off during the day and then put it over at night times when the temperatures go down. And then I would think in a week's time the temperature should be improving and I won't need to have it on at all. And when they start to grow I'll need to support them and what I'll do with that is I will lay some horizontal netting right along the length of the bed and this just helps to support the tall plants growing up through it and I'll show you that in a video later on when we get to that stage. <laughs> 